broke up with my girlfriend in the beginning of the year. We were arguing almost daily. This wasn't the first time I tried to break up with her. She said, I know what I have to do now. I'll be better for us, which is what she promised six months before. She didn't look out for my well-being the way I did for hers. She didn't know basic things. I mean, who taught her how to budget her funds? Who suggested to have a better relationship with her mom? And when her engine gave out and I shelled out three Gs for a pair, who told her the importance of an oil change? We had this deal. You be designated driver when we go out with my friends, and I'll be DD when we go out with yours. I resented the fact that she didn't keep her end of our deal. We were celebrating my old roommate's birthday. Did she stay sober? No. She knew I had prior DUIs. I guess she wanted to have fun with my friends that night more than I did. Since I was the more sober one, I drove. Maybe she thought I was mad because she was supposed to drive and started an argument just to break the silence. But all I wanted was to get her home. So I was speeding, and I got pulled over, and I got arrested. I spent the night in jail before I could bail out. Why did I have to get arrested for her to realize I needed her back the way I had hers? So too little, too late. The Wednesday after, enough is enough, and I told her we were done. I was sentenced to four months of house arrest. It could have been worse. I was supposed to spend 120 days in county, this being the third DUI. My lawyer asked me to provide character letters from a variety of people, which helped me get the lesser sentence. I moved back to my parents' house to save on rent, faced with lawyer fees, court fines, and cost of DUI program. I said goodbye to the money I was saving for a down payment for a house of my own. House arrest started in June. Deputies came to my house for an inspection. I don't know what for, maybe drugs or weapons. I didn't have any. One deputy took a shit in my bathroom. <laughs> he asked, but what am I supposed to say? No, and, and then get denied house arrest and go back to see the judge and tell him why I can't have house arrest and get resentenced? No, thank you. Yes, deputy, drop a deuce. <laughs> I had to wear an ankle monitor. That thing was a bitch. The deputy explained if you charge it too long, it messes up the battery and would stop charging. Charge it too little and the GPS signal will go out and we'd consider you trying to escape because we don't know where you are. How do I know it's charged enough? You don't, he said. <laughs> he said I just have to charge it half an hour in the morning, half an hour during the day, half an hour at night. So on top of being on house arrest, I had to plug the charger into the ankle bracelet and be shackled to an outlet for a total of an hour and a half every day. Oh, and don't get it wet. The fuck? <laughs> I was allowed to be out of the house for work. At least I kept my job. I'm sitting down all day in front of a computer anyway, but I went straight home after. The rest of the time I was restricted to the boundaries of my parents' house. I couldn't leave until exactly 7.30 in the morning. I had to be back by exactly 5.30 in the afternoon. If I was ever caught in traffic, I would have to contact the deputy's office to let them know if I'd be late. Every eight hours, I blew into a portable breathalyzer that took my picture, which meant forced sobriety the whole four months. I coordinated the ankle monitor charging with the times I had to breathe in and take a pic. During the day, I hid in the work bathroom to do that. Also, I had an outlet under my work desk, and it wasn't hard to hide it from my coworkers, so I was cool. I thought up ways to maybe cheat curfew, like if I could somehow take the ankle bracelet off and attach it to my dog's collar, I could leave. <laughs> or maybe if I could make a plaster mold of my face and make a rubber mask and pay someone to wear it to <laughs> blow into the breathalyzer for me. I spent the 4th of July by myself in the backyard with a soda. I watched fireworks that were mostly blocked by the fence and other houses. It got pretty lonely. Freedom for America, but not for me. I missed two weddings, three bachelor parties of close college friends, one of which was in town. They're all dispersed to other cities up and down California, and we get together every now and again, but the times are few and far between. 
Mostly we get together for special occasions. It was no fun wallowing on my own. Friends were getting older and mature and married. Meanwhile, there I was getting more DUIs. I had to own up to the fact that I chose to drink and drive. I should have caught a lift. I had to stop blaming my ex. She didn't know better. Why did I expect so much from her anyway? And if I broke up with her when I first wanted to, maybe I would have, had, would have been stuck here. Also, I could have killed someone. I could have killed myself. It was all on me. Around the end of month two, I was getting used to the monotony of charging up the ankle bracelet and blowing into the breathalyzer. I desperately had to find things to occupy my time. I did prison workouts, 200 push-ups a day, 100 squats a day, and free weights. That along with not drinking made me lose some pounds. My sister got free babysitting. <laughs> she wouldn't even have to ask if I could watch my little toddler nephew for her. She, she would just bring him over. I didn't mind. I got really good at Mario Kart 8 and Rock Band. I started online dating. And just as I was going to give up online dating from the catfishing and begging for money, I met a girl. Right off the bat, I told her I was in house arrest and all my flaws and faults, mostly to scare her away. But also, I didn't want to leave anything hidden. She did the same. I was surprised, all cards on the table. I generally started waking up early and going to bed early. On, on Saturdays, I cooked a simple breakfast for myself or tried to perfect a poached egg. I started cooking breakfast for my folks on Sundays and, conversation, and had conversations with them as opposed to getting lectured. We live and we learn. I'm just happy you're home, Anak, my mom said. Towards the, end, the la towards the last month of house arrest, a friend from the Bay Area flew down and gathered a few UCR friends and visited me. We had a nice little dinner party in the back patio. This was one of those special occasions, I guess. None of us was ever on lockdown before. I got to really gauge who my true friends are, those who checked up on me regularly with a call or a text or dropped by to visit. House arrest ended on a Monday, exactly 120 days, and I took off work. A deputy, thankfully, thankfully not the one that graced my bathroom, <laughs> stuck a pin at the bottom of the ankle monitor, and shit came right off. Imagine if I knew that in the beginning. <laughs> But then, again, I wouldn't have had the time to myself to reflect. Saturday after that, I didn't even go out for a drink. I stayed home. I fell asleep in the living room that night. My dad woke me up. It was around 2 in the morning. He couldn't sleep and was wanting to watch TV, but I was there. I asked why he couldn't sleep. He told me he felt guilty. We ended up having a conversation until 6 in the morning. 30 years, this was the first time we ever did that. My dad never talks about his feelings. There's this Filipino thing, pagsubok, sort of like the children are punished for the mistakes of their parents, but a deeper meaning that's lost in translation. He took my getting house arrest was because of all the bad things he got away with in the past. Many occasions where he was pulled over from a night of drinking and the cops just let him go. He told me he was proud of me and that he thinks I'm generally a good person and I just get unlucky and caught and that I didn't deserve to go through this. I told him not to blame himself. If he knew the bullshit I used to do, then he probably would have said that I got what was coming. It was me that got me myself into this. But I needed this time out. I got to reevaluate my whole life, that and pay my debt to society. I came to believe things happen the way that they're supposed to happen. If I didn't get arrested, I'd still be miserable with my ex and drinking every day. I wouldn't have went online and met my current girlfriend. It may be worse. After my second DUI, if you were to ask me if I were ever to get another one, I would have said, hell no. But I didn't make any life changes. This time, after the third, if you ask me the same, I'll say, who knows? I just got to keep making better choices and hope not. That and because the next DUI is mandatory one-year jail sentence. <laughs> Fuck that shit. Yo, give it up for the prettiest boy in Paradise Hills, everybody, John Briones. <laughs>